Now, now to speak on the impact of rebuilding small businesses in a weak economy during a pandemic is business strategist and uh, Tony Lumelu Foundation alumni, Nkechi Alade. Uh, welcome to the morning show, Nkechi. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, glad to have you. Well, uh, from what I have read, you have a passion for developing uh, startups. What are the initial steps to developing one? And um, what is the most important of these initial steps? Well, in starting a startup, especially in Nigeria, one of the most important things you need to pay attention to is research. So because we have a country where we don't really collate enough data, you have to take your time to conduct proper surveys and research to really understand the markets and the dynamics of things you're dealing with. The Nigerian market, like I like to say, is the variable Y, while other countries you could refer to as X. Nigerian market is different. You cannot use the same approach that you use abroad here. So even if you want to launch a product that already exists outside of the world in Nigeria, you must pay attention to your research. You must pay attention to data. You must be able to understand how it will impact the lives of people who are living in the third world, such as Nigeria. So that's the most important thing I would say, your data. You must pay attention to research. I'd imagine in addition to data, it's also about knowing the business climate that you want to go into, whether or not it's feasible to execute your ideas at, it, at that particular time. So if we're coming off of 2020, here we are in the second month of 2021, still very much in the throes of a, of a pandemic. Surely this would not be a good time to start a business or is it? It depends. To be very honest with you, a lot of people have built successful businesses between 2020 and now. So it depends on what industry you're looking to go into and how you're going to go into it. So you cannot operate business the way we were operating business before, right? You must pay attention to the fact that now the world has changed globally. So we have to pay attention to the fact that things are going to work remotely. Things are going to work online. Your payment systems, everything must be efficient and effective. If you're not able to do these things, plug in logistics as a third party service, your business might not be able to thrive. However, there are certain businesses that, to be very honest with you, might not be very feasible right now. So there are certain industries that have totally collapsed as a result of the pandemic. Give us but an example some of them of those are types of industries. Is one for sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, for some sure. of these industries. <laughs> Please go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Some of these industries, you know, you would find that people in the entertainment space. So you would find like event centers clubs, restaurants, some of these people are still suffering, hotels, the travel industry, people are unable to go anywhere. So you find a lot of people have lost their jobs. People have been laid off. People who are sort of client facing, so you have customer service reps, most of them have been redundant for a long time because now the jobs have moved to the online space. So as a person, as a business, you must be able to build that channel for your customers or your consumers where they are able to still interact with you without having to do so much physical interaction. So, for example, you run a restaurant, you run a salon, you have to start to think of ways that you can have sort of virtual conversations with your clients, teaching them how to do things online. If you have a hotel, you're plugging in logistics, you're making sure that your online delivery system is working effectively and efficiently. So these are things that a lot of business owners neglected in the past. So when we said things like, oh, you have to have a contingency plan, you have to have a structure, you have to have strategy, you have to write, you have the right people. It became like, oh, you know, is this really important? But now everybody sort of entered shock mode and started to do things because it became a need. It became a, you have to do this or your business sort of goes extinct. So that those are the industries that have been affected so far. Well, before I ask you my next question, you talked about contingency plan. What would that mean? And then uh, to my next question, really, would you? Uh, say so, um, startups have fared well in our climbs, if not why, and what can the government and private investors do to change this narrative? Okay, so in terms of the government, truth is, Nigeria is one country where we can just wake up and the policy comes up and everything just switches for businesses. And unfortunately, the most affected people are usually the small and the medium scale businesses, and they are actually the drivers of the economy right now. So if we're not able to put in the right people, the right policies, it becomes almost impossible for us to be able to build these small businesses that are trying to thrive, right? And in terms of investment, what happens is that it starts to scare the foreign investors away from this country. So we have to sort of solidify that with them and build proper investment structures for them that make them feel safe to deal with us. The dollar seems to be depreciating. It's affecting businesses. The economy is not doing as well as it should. So the government really needs to step in. We need to try and make policies that don't scare people away, but try to encourage the small businesses so that they're able to do business with or without the third parties or investors from other countries.
Well, you didn't ask the, answer the question on uh, how has the startups fared in this part of the world? You know, uh, I mean, because uh, people are listening and maybe they want to start up, but they want to get into that. So it's important they get, get, they get to hear these things that will either encourage them to move or take a step backwards. So how has startups fared in our clients? Okay, startups have fared quite well, to be very honest with you. So for your startup to really do well, it has a lot to do with you as a person. There are going to be environmental factors. There are going to be internal and external factors affecting your business daily. Now, that's why you have to pay attention to the kind of business you're trying to start. Is it the right time? Is it the right place? Do I have the right amount of money? Do I have the right amount of people to work with? It's beyond just having a good idea. I will be honest with you. You can have an excellent idea, but be in the wrong market, be in the wrong environment. So yes, your business can thrive, but there's something we call validating your idea. Is your idea even going to be able to be visible in the market as of today? It might have worked 10 years ago. What is it going to work in this country right now? It's not something you do just by yourself, right? You have to make sure that you do, like I said before, extensive research. Understand your market. Pay attention to what is happening. If a new policy comes out, how is it going to affect your business? Is it going to change things overnight? If it does, what next? A contingency plan is really having what we call like an alternate plan, almost like a plan B, not kicking yourself out of business, but showing you that, okay, if this happens, this is the worst case scenario. What do I do? How do I handle this for my business? What do we need to do so that the business doesn't close, the business doesn't go extinct, and we do not go out of funds? So yes, the business plan might not be so great, but it is possible, but I would advise you go into a business that is going to work in the times we're in right now. Not every business would do so well right now. That's the honest truth. Yeah. See, Inkachi, here's the thing, right? I, I agree totally with what you've said about knowing your customer, knowing the market, doing your research, arming yourself with information, having a backup plan, having a backup plan for your backup plan. But then here in Nigeria, sometimes it feels as though the cards are stacked against you. Our government is so powerful. The central bank has so much power that can thwart people's business plans. I'm sure you're aware of the, of the current ban on cryptocurrencies yeah. or the trading of it. And ultimately, for somebody who might have gone into the, that business thinking that I'm trying to change with the times and become more modern, surely that must hurt business sentiment. Surely that must do, go against everything that you're saying. How do you navigate? navigate a time like this? The truth is, with the ban of crypto yesterday, it really shook the whole industry, it shook the whole business world in Nigeria because there's really nothing much you can do when the government comes up with a policy like that. There are certain things that the government is in control of and they want to remain in control of. So even something such as crypto that is digital, I mean, it's digital currency, you should be able to trade, you should be able to do what you want to do. What I would say is maybe they want to come and regulate instead of just, you know, scrapping it totally. Because what happens is that foreign investors start to get scared. They start to wonder if I invest in this country, is it safe? Is my money safe? Am I going to get any return? So it has hugely affected the business industry. That's the truth. People might lose their jobs. Companies might shut down as a result of this. So yes, it is going to shake things up. Things might have drastic things might happen. A lot of people have been affected. People have money stuck now. People have people on their payroll who might, they might not be able to continue paying if this pans out. And I mean, it's not as if it was a discussion. It came out as a policy and it's taking effect immediately. So this is really, really a big deal. And you know, hopefully one of, something can really be done about it because it wouldn't be able to be feasible for business owners who are in that um, realm to thrive, impossible. All right, well, I, I discussed, if I mean, actually, I discussed with uh, Boston, and Boston was saying that what government did was not particularly uh, banning it outrightly, that what government did was that it can no longer go through the banking system. Fine. That's what, uh, you know... Uh, but that you can still... Which is effectively a ban anyway, if you want to, if, if that's the entire point. No. That's what say. say you, can, you can go on and do what you... But don't go through the bank system, I don't know. So uh, that was what he was saying, mm. you know. It's and, just, so. you know, as I was saying, it's just another example of, uh, you know, the government hurting people. Suddenly, you, you remember, yeah. yeah, suddenly. You remember the, the uh, motorcycle and tricycle ban and yeah. how that affected Gokada oh, yeah. and how those so. people now are unable to feed their families, continue thriving in their livelihood. So... Sometimes it does feel as though while Lagos has a huge representation, uh, a reputation rather for, you know, of entrepreneurship and being the place where you make it almost like you make it in Lagos, you can make it anywhere. But when you have policies like this, as I was asking you in Ketchi, it, it, does, very... it does feel very, very difficult to thrive. So yes, if, if someone were to approach you in Ketchi with these issues, what type of advice would you offer them? 
Honestly, I would say take risks, but take very calculated risks. Nigeria is a very, like I said, is variable. Why? Anything can happen overnight. So if you're a small business and you want to go into, you know, such an industry, let's say crypto, for this is not even the right time to go into that, as we can see, because we don't even have enough information yet. You know, we're trying to find out, okay, to what extent is this policy? Is this something that we can still do transactions maybe with our, with our ATM cards? Are they going to block our cards? Are they going to block our cards? To what extent? So you need to know how these things affect you. How does it affect you as a small business? Is it viable or not? Unfortunately, we can't say what's going to happen tomorrow because anything can happen. The policy can come out and change everything. But if you want to stay safe, there are certain businesses that would always, always, always be in existence, right? You have, you have termed as essential businesses, I would say. They would always be in existence. So you start to want to, you know, swing your way towards those kind of businesses where you're kind of sure of your returns and your investment. You're not just investing in a great idea, but you're making sure that it has worked and it can work in this economy because Nigeria is a peculiar economy. It's not one that all encourages all forms of entrepreneurship. And Nigerians right are peculiar too. <laughs> We're peculiar people. All right. What are the major uh, stumbling blocks faced by uh, those who want to, I mean, we talked about the environment in terms of policies, uh, policy making from government, but there must be other uh, stumbling blocks faced by those who want to start a business and then how to guard against it. Okay, so one of the major issues that you know, challenge people face is funding, money. You know, how do you get access to money? So even if you're a new business, you're trying to get a loan, it's difficult. You're an existing business owner, you're trying to get funding, it's difficult. So in terms of that, you want to try and look out for international organizations who are looking to invest in you, partner with you. In terms of um, family and friends, your personal funds, have you put aside some money for your business? You want to try as much as possible to you start with um, startup capital that can move your business from A to B. You don't have to go, you know, 100% in the beginning, but at least to sustain you before you're able to, you know, run an autopilot. Another major challenge people face is people, because without having the right sort of people on your team, you cannot drive that business. So working for a small business is very different from working for, you know, a bigger firm. There are so many things involved. You're looking for people who are passionate. You're looking for people who, whose personal values somehow align with your core values as a business. So you're not just looking at their CVs. You're looking at people. They're trying to run personality tests, understand them as people, and see if they understand in your dream and they believe in what you're doing. Then they're able to drive and they're able to move along with you. So funding, you know, having the right people, try to put in place some form of process because a lot of times small business owners find out that they are very overwhelmed. You know, they go to bed, they have aches and pains. This is because yes, you're doing most of the work. Another thing is that a lot of business owners fail to delegate. So they have people, right? Those that can afford to have people have staff, but they do not delegate the right way. So they are micromanaging their staff. They are not giving them what to do. They are not properly laid out tasks. You know, this is what you need to do every day. This is our end-to-end -end process. So one thing I would say is from when, you know, somebody contacts you from whatever platform, your website, walking, you know, social media, have it documented from when they contact you to when a sale is made, what happens in between. Be able to, you know, constantly improve these documents and share with your staff. Start to teach them, start to understand that you don't build a business just around the people, but around the functions of the people that you hire to work with you as a business owner. You can sort out that, you know, make sure you're able to also keep proper records, keep money, keep financial records. A lot of business owners do not have clear separation between their personal funds and their business funds. Mm -hmm. So as a business, if you really want to grow a business, you need to learn to set that, you know, blind, cut it, make that to be clear. Have your own salary, have your staff salary and ensure that you're not just, you know, Keeping into the funds, All right. into the funds. Okay. Oh, she, uh, we're not letting you go. We're coming back to you to continue discussing with you, but we'll take a short break now and be back and continue the discussion with Nkechi Alade. Stay with us. All right, we're still discussing with uh, Nketi Alade. Uh, Femi thought uh, she was the one going did, to speak. She just tried to jump <laughs> in, but then she saw my face and had to cheer. All right, uh, Nketi, you're still there. Uh, I, there was an issue I was trying to raise, but okay, uh, maybe I've, I've not remembered it. Let, let's go on to some other thing. Uh, you should let me go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, you run a business development and consulting center. Tell us about some of the strategies and solutions that you make available to startups and how well this has been received over time that you've been in this uh, line of business. Okay, thank you very much for your question. So yes, I run a consulting firm called Elvarida. We started this about three years ago, and um, we 
work with individuals who are looking to start, to grow, or to expand or improve their businesses on different levels. The reason why we started this is that we understood that there's a bridge, there's a gap between having a good idea and its execution. So we started to build solutions that help you along the way. So we provide services for them, such as research, business plans, you know, financial projections, strategy, structure, and training for their team. reason why we started this, like I said, is to be able to help them along the line. Working as, you know, running a business is not the easiest thing to do. Sometimes you need that external force. You need that external eye to be able to see things from a perspective that you cannot. Somebody who is not emotional, somebody who is not tied to the business emotionally, but is giving you constructive feedback and defining things for you along the line. Now, a lot of these businesses might not be able to afford, you know, very big um, consulting firms, you know, top five firms, and they're looking, but they still want results. So we found that there was a gap in the industry, there was a gap in the market, and that was what led us to starting up what we do. So our solutions are tailor-made for clients because, for example, if you have 10 fashion um, businesses, none of them are the same, and all of them would have different strategies to sort of execute and drive their marketing and sales and drive their numbers in the industry. When you look at the journey of Elverida, can you tell us about the, the story itself, when you started, why you started, and what your toughest period has been? Okay, so why I started personally was I found that I was that person that always wanted to find answers to people's businesses. My friends would call me, my family would call me, oh, I have this idea, can you help me with this? And I love to do it, I enjoyed it. I would have sleepless nights trying to figure out, you know, how your business would thrive. And I also found that I have a strength, which is multitasking. So I'm able to work on different businesses, different industries without any of them clashing. And then, you know, a couple of years ago, like I said, we just, I started this business personally and said, you know, why not start this as a proper business, you know, structure it out properly so that people can start to pay for, you know, services that we render. Well, along the line, as you have said, what's the greatest challenge that we have faced is having people understand that they need this service. So in the beginning, we were trying to sort of struggling, oh, who is who we're going to work with, who is who are we going to be attracted to, who are going to be attracted to us. But over time, as time has gone by, people that are, have been naturally been drawn to us because they understand, okay, this is what you're doing. What we're doing was different. What we're doing, we're not just sort of giving you motivational talks. But we're not telling you what to do, but we're showing you how to do it. So that was strange. That was different for people. Most people were just used to, you know, being told what exactly is needed for their business. But we will take you by the hand and show you these are the steps that need to be taken. This is what you need to do. If we need to have the staff work with you for a period of time, we do that. Really, whatever it takes to get you from where you are to where you need to be. Mm, quite interesting. Yes, I, rem I remembered um, what I wanted to chip in when you were talking about when you earlier before we went on break, and that was some business or businesses uh, in Kechi, uh, especially at the start, don't need office space and such like. So how do you get people to understand this, you know, that you can start and then grow instead of trying to... Uh, be big when in actual fact you're supposed to you don't even need what what and some people i'm sure you agree with me some people yes. uh, get into this yet so speak to that oh it looks like uh, we might have temporarily lost in catchy while yeah. we work on getting her back i'm so i, I suppose we could talk amongst ourselves of course. Uh, about that mm. situation there. yeah because i i know that i have seen people mm. for example who sell bread or even Shoes, or even, why are you laughing? <laughs> you just said bread. You know how I get you said bread, it made me chuckle. Don't worry. <laughs> who, who, who deal on uh, even clothes, you know. Mm. I see them put it in their car, open the boot, right? And they're selling stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I, and I have discussed with some people who said, Look, you don't particularly need this space that you're occupying because you are eating into your capital, right? You don't need this space, right. what you need really mainly mm -hmm. is the clientele begin with your clientele you can even move from your house and supply to them yep. in the offices or wherever they are you know and then gradually you build to when you need maybe an, a small office space mm -hmm. for a particular reason sure you know then you can then from there grow I understand that. And I think lots of times people um, have an idea in their mind of what their business should look like and they want to execute that business. So if it's that I want to have my own store, for example, you'd invest in the, the biggest that you can afford and go ahead. And then you realize that, gosh, even before I have my first customer, I have this rent payment to pay. I have this electricity exactly, bill to pay. Exactly. And now at the end of the month, when I look at my revenues, my the, costs the, are so high. The, What's the, the point of all the, of this? Yeah, you know? cost of running the business, yeah. what you call 
call uh, overheads. Mm. It's now eating up the entire business. Yes. And, the, and then, of course, I was going to also the fact that when you're starting a business, you have to also uh, factor in the fact that you may not start immediately to make profit. Mm -hmm. You have to get to a place called get even. And then yep. you start making breaking a profit, even. breaking even, and then making a profit. And that's where the importance of starting small or making sure that you're not spending on unnecessary things, things like you've talked about. You, you, put, you put the AC, you put uh, an office space, you have to pay house rent, you have to pay this. Maybe you were supposed to use a room. You decide that, no, 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 it's too small. Let me take a flat. Let me take yep. a four-bedroom flat or take a, a big, big flat because you want to maybe compete or show off, which is wrong, mm. you know, and then only to find out that, ah, the business, the overheads is actually eating into my business. Exactly. You know, yeah. Kechi is back, oh, we got her. Yeah, and Kechi, glad to have you back. Uh, well, these are some of the things that I'm sure start startups suffer too, because I get really peaked when I'm calling somebody and I can't hear the person. It, it really gets to me, or there's, you know, this network, problems that's giving you headache. Yeah, I've not been able to get used to, you know, trying to handle it, but I will. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see, Nketi wasn't like that. She's gone again. <laughs> All right, Nketi, speak to that. I hope she's there. She, yes, fantastic. Not sure for a while, but I know you were talking about the, before I went off, you were talking about not needing an office space. Yes, yeah, so stuff um, like that. So yes, like that. yes. Yes, yes. So, yes, that is very, 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 very true. One of the things that we do is we try as much as possible to create a budget based on financial projections that are realistic. So a lot of times business owners just want to start big, like you have said. They want to have offices, you know, a lot of staff, lots of cars. But in the long run, how long is it going to take before you're able to recoup your investment? So if you don't need an office space, you don't, then you don't need to get one. All you need is more like a computer, working, stable internet, access to light so that you're able to work with your team and be able to lie with clients, you know, depending on the nature of your business. There are some businesses that you need to have a brick and mortar store in terms of you know, trying to build trust. Maybe it's a restaurant, maybe it's a hotel. But in service-based businesses now, as much as possible, you want to limit your costs, your cost to entry. That will really help your business in the long run. Well, in case you, we only have a minute left. If you were to mm. give okay. our video, our 30 seconds even, if you were to give our viewers a lasting piece of advice, what would that be? I would say run with your idea. People invest in you. People believe in you. People believe in what you're doing because you need to believe in it. So I'm a strong believer in building what you believe in and going for it purposefully, putting your mind to it because you are the only person that can stop yourself from achieving your dreams. No matter what comes your way, there are obstacles, but you can drive. You can, if you believe in yourself, other people will. What you call yourself is others. What others will call you. How you dress is how people will address you. Very important. Okay. Thank you so much, Nketiah Lada there, strategist. Thank you so much for having me.